every summer by setting its forests on fire and cleansing out the old deadwood. Now, if the U.S. Forest Service was still the U.S. Forest Service, they would have cleansed out the old deadwood by burning it out a long time ago, and we would have fewer of these infernos. But because of the environmental nutcases, the Forest Service has been prevented from burning out the deadwood, and consequently we have these massive forest fires that now threaten Los Angeles, as an example. The foul air, by the way, has reached even Denver. What else do you want to talk about in the Savage Nation? Well, take a look around. Today is September 1, isn't it? Today is the day that uh, the British government was supposed to respond to Michael Savage to remove his name from the blacklist, the hate list that they put him on with murderers and terrorists. Thus far, my attorney in England has not heard from them. Please go to michaelsavage.com. Please look at the letter that we sent to the United Kingdom's uh, labor government. And please buy yourself a copy of Banned in Britain before we go to press to assure yourself that you get a copy of the first edition, first printing. Politicians are politicians. We understand that. But never before in our history have we had so many politicians playing against the nation. That's my opinion. Beowulf, what have you seen today? Well, in addition to Obama's poll numbers plummeting, as you mentioned uh, a moment ago with Rasmussen, apparently the Democrats in Congress are uh, expecting double-digit losses as well. A uh, prominent uh, uh, political expert is saying that uh, many veteran congressional election watchers, including uh, the Democratic ones, are are uh, seeing that uh, maybe more than 20 seats are going to be lost the next election around. Didn't I predict that months ago? Didn't I right. say that on this show? That's Didn't right. I say that the Democrats are going to suffer a bloodbath at the midterm election? That's exactly what you've said many times before Because the, the people, the people were hoodwinked by the most expensive campaign in American history with money that came from foreign sources and unknown sources to take this unknown far-left radical communist senator from Chicago and make him president. Now that they've seen the guy and heard the guy and see what he's trying to do to us in so short a period of time and his Hate America tours around the world, they don't like him. They don't like the guy. And I believe there's going to be, a, unfortunately, the Republicans are going to be the victors, and I don't like that either. I'd like to see all independents win. I'd like to see returning combat veterans uh, win. I'd like to see real Americans win, you know. I see that on my website, uh, Spitzer is eyeing a comeback. Why not? I mean, compared to what some of the others are doing, Spitzer would be a good choice for governor. Don't you think? The AFL, CIO, and Democrats push a new tax on Wall Street. You know, I actually agree with them. It's called the Tobin tax. Because it would mainly hit big investment firms such as Goldman Sachs, which are reaping billions of dollars in profits while the rest of the economy sputters. I'm all for it. I agree with the AFL-CIO and Democrats to push a new Wall Street tax because it only occurs, uh, it is only taxes, not on everyone's trades, but about those who do electronic trading in, in tremendous volume. In other words, the major speculators will get hit with a small tax and it would deter speculation and raise a lot of money. I'm all for it. That's, I really agree with them. So mark it down. Today, Michael Savage agrees with the AFL, CIO, and Democrats. You know why? I'm an open mind. I'm not one of these Republican hacks that automatically knee-jerk says no. You know what I mean? And apparently at the same time, U.S. Marshals are getting ready to sell off Bernie uh, Madoff's properties. Finally, Ruthie and uh, Bernie, all their stuff is going to be going on the auction block. Yeah, yeah, but you look at the, uh, why do they, well, at the end of the summer, they're selling his house in the Hamptons. I guess the marshals were using it for the summer, uh, uh, you know, to analyze what they had to sell. They used it all summer, now they're going to sell it when no one wants it. On the bottom of my website, michaelsavage.com, there's a picture of a bear sitting at a picnic table in a national forest. And the headline is, Disturbing Wildlife Trend. Formerly self-sufficient animals are now showing signs of belonging to the, to the Democratic Party, as they have apparently learned to just sit and wait for the government to step in and provide for their care. you got to look at that picture of the bear. I mean, that's really what's happening. Well, that's it for now. What about you, Beowulf? Win one for the guzzler? <laughs> I think we could go in that direction. Of course, you know, one of his liberal compatriots, uh, Representative Gerald Nadler, uh, apparently uh, he wants to investigate the torture claims, and he's uh, pushing for uh, people who defend our country to be investigated in a, in a big way. Uh, following oh, so the Nadler is now going to run the Inquisition, is that it? Mr. Liberal is now the Inquisitor. Give him a black cloak and give him hot pliers. 
And there you got Nadler. Give him the S and M out. A little bit later in the program, uh, Matt Towery, who wrote a, an excellent article uh, involving your situation uh, with being uh, banned in Britain. And oh yeah, where is the compassion for a man who has harmed no one, or do you reserve your compassion for bona fide savages like the Lockerbie bomber? He wrote. And by the way, banned in Britain now contains the information people have been uh, wanting, which is how the UK banned savage for oil. We think that the Saudis pulled the string on this one, my friend, and that's why they won't let go. It was a straight-out get savage for the Dubai ports deal. And also following up on the uh, Afghanistan situation, uh, Obama has his uh, flax out uh, talking his ability up. I guess General Jim Jones has come out in, in the last day or two and said the Obama is doing a, administration is doing a better job of fighting terrorism than the Bush administration is. Really? You mean domestic terrorism by suppressing everyone's freedom uh, and having people frightened. They've suppressed terrorism in America, is that it? No, he's got a D after his name, so it's okay, I guess. No, it's not okay. Most important phrases to remember as we go into September. One, win one for the guzzler and pass the torch. <laughs> Senator Kennedy, pass the torch. Savage. On the air, online, and on the go, this is Talk 910 KNEW. That liberalism is a mental disorder is well known amongst those of us who are not mentally disordered. I've published it in a best-selling book. I've repeated it. It seems that the progressives have a problem with the idea of responsibility, both personal and social. It may not be a mental disorder, but it is a disorder. Joining us today with his views on this is Dr. Peter Bregan. Yes, Michael. Today I want to talk about the dread word responsibility. Children and progressives often hate the word responsibility. Adults who are failing in their lives often detest the word as well. When we were children, taking responsibility may have sounded about as inviting as grabbing a porcupine by the tail or jumping up and down barefoot on a bed of tacks. Every time an adult was mad or disappointed, we may have heard, be responsible. Or worse, that's irresponsible. Some of us never get over it. I've seen 40-year-old men wince at the sound of the word responsibility. Like a punch in the nose or a slap on the face. Be responsible. Smack. It harms people psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually to view responsibility as a punishment imposed on us from the outside. Responsibility becomes something someone else wants you to do against your will and probably against your best interest. Too many adults resent the idea of taking responsibility, and that resentment becomes ruinous to their lives. Because the word is so emotionally charged, I've tried to find less painful synonyms. Maybe autonomy, but that's a word for philosophers, not ordinary folks. Maybe self-sufficiency, but that's about something specific, providing for our own needs. Maybe independence, but that's more the result of taking responsibility. There really isn't another word to substitute for the dread word, responsibility. Well, what does responsibility mean to you? Responsibility to me means that you own what you do, and you do what you know is right. You never blame what you do on someone else or something else, because you recognize that you are the one who makes the choices about your own actions. It means that you and you alone make your own decisions and take your own actions, and that you always do your best to do what you know is right. Responsibility means feeling eager and glad to accept the consequences of your choices and, and your actions. In fact, for a successful life, taking responsibility has to appeal to you. You have to want it and to seize it. I believe that rationality and love are the twin guidelines for responsible living. Responsibility means acting on the basis of rational ethics in everything you do all the time and in every way. No exceptions, none at all. And then there's love. To me, the ultimate expression of a good life and the happiest life involves taking responsibility for becoming a source of love. Someone who takes joy in being aware of other people, creativity, nature, our national values, and God. It sounds as though you believe responsibility is the key to understanding why progressivism won't work. They're just irresponsible. They're children. Yes, I began by saying that progressives and children often hate the word responsibility. Progressives, statists, and extreme left-wingers dislike the word because it suggests that people are not entitled to good lives, that they instead have to work for them. 
puts the onus or the burden on the individual. Responsibility is actually the dagger in the heart of progressives. That's because progressivism thrives on people feeling abused and victimized. Progressives and statists thrive on the idea that individuals cannot and should not take care of themselves. Being progressive too often means feeling sorry for and looking down on other people, rather than empowering them by defending their freedom, enlarging their choices and opportunities, and encouraging their sense of responsibility. From bailing out giant corporations to enforcing government health care, progressivism undermines responsibility. Our founders knew that freedom provides opportunity and that after that it's up to individual Americans to make the most of it. The founders continually emphasized the direct relationship between taking responsibility and enjoying happiness.